it's late January, it's freezing cold, but it's beautifully sunny and I don't think they gritted last night, so I'm gonna take this car for a drive. Because it's the last chance I'll get. You may notice I've not yet bought a radio mic. This may get awkward. I'm gonna have to unplug the microphone now. Well, at a free afternoon. I was meant to be going off to do a, to a job, uh, working outdoors, um, but I got an email over the weekend saying the person I was working with uh, wasn't free after all, so I am. And I've got a beautiful sunny afternoon and a lovely Rover P6. So I think those two add up pretty well together, don't you? Um, I had to drop my son off at a, um, an out of school class. You can probably see the child seat here in the front. Don't worry, it's on a blanket, not scratching the leather. And it's about a 40 minute round trip. So I figured, let's not take the boring new car, let's take the lots of fun old car and make a more afternoon out of it. So here we are. The nice country lanes. Kent, the Garden of England, is a better place for a, a nice sort of 40 or 50 year old classic car to wander around in the sunshine. This does of course open up the age old worry of all classic car owners who obviously want to take the cars out in the winter time because you want to drive your car. Isn't it? What's the point of having a car sat in a garage doing nothing? But at the same time, you don't want to rot the thing by driving it through the winter and uh, getting salt up in the arches and under the chassis and you know rotting it to nothing for the sake of just for the, a quick drive, a joyride, basically. Um, so, I don't know, what do you guys do? Do you take them out regardless? Do you choose your days carefully? Me, I, I'm a careful day chooser, if that makes sense. Uh, today, it is bitterly cold. But it rained last night, so most of the salt has been washed off the road. I'm not aware that they salted the roads last night, so I think we should be okay from that point of view. And it's nice and sunny, and the roads are now dry, so I think I should be okay in terms of not getting stuff splashed into the bodywork. I've gone the wrong way I'm, because I was talking to the camera. I'm going to have to do a quick three-point turn in a housing estate. Excellent. Oh, you really do miss power steering, I tell you that. Oh, dear me. I'll take this opportunity to go and grab the GoPros and move them somewhere else off my car. Yeah, microphone wires and seat belts do not happy bedfellows make. And I'll be honest, I say I've gone the wrong way. Basically, I wasn't really going anywhere, I was just going for a drive, really. Um, and I forgot that, well, I didn't realise that the road I was on isn't the one that turns into a lovely country lane, it's the one that it leads you to a, a largish village via a housing estate. So, um, so anyway, as I was saying, the old debate of do you use the car or not? Because classic cars, or any car, needs to be used. If you've got a car that's just sitting doing nothing in a garage, it's going to suffer for it, believe it or not. The, um, the petrol will sit in the pipes and just go off. The um, the rubber in the tyres needs to move, otherwise you get flat spots at the very least, and it's got oils in the tyres that need to be you know, moved and sort of spread around the internal structure of the rubber tyre just by driving the thing. Everything will dry out and seize up. You really do need to uh, be getting the car out, but at the same time, you can't be getting it out on a day when they've just been salting, which opens up the question of what do you do with wintertime um, car shows? And the, the Brooklands one is a fantastic show, which I've managed to miss the last couple of years by doing sort of family stuff that we couldn't be avoided on the on the same day. Here's the lane I was looking for. So yeah, what do you reckon? Should I be taking 
Should I be taking my car out? Do you take your cars out? I'll be honest, my modern retro classics, so the Mini, the Alpha, the Tomcat, those are all on Swan this month because I didn't want to take them out in the salt because they're all of an age where they will now start suffering from driving on, on gritted roads and start corroding. And only the, the Rover Tomcat has got any corrosion in the bodywork at the moment. The Mini and the um, Alpha are actually fine. There's nothing, not a spot on them. And I don't want it to change. If you're not watching in the UK, you have to pay an annual tax to drive on the road and I do mine by monthly direct debit so I can take them on and off the road as and when I want and by not taxing three cars this month I've saved 60 quid at like the tightest time of the year for me summertime probably. Um, first of all, before I set off today, I had to top up the radiator because it was quite low. Um, I just had to use fresh water because I didn't have any antifreeze around, but it did get a bit warm last time I drove it. When the car went into Classic Cars of Kent last year and had that little incident when it overheated madly and I thought it was on fire, uh, CCK changed the one hose that was split but did say it was worth looking at getting the rest of them done because they're the same age and so they're liable to start cracking at any time as well. Um, to be honest, I don't think the others were quite as old because I'd changed them intermittently through over the years. But I think it would be a good idea if I were to go and change all of the radiator hoses because they've been sat for a long time now. That wouldn't be a bad thing to do. Um, I've noticed the last couple of times I've driven the car, the clutch travel is very, very short. I seem to only having like a couple of centimetres at the bottom of the pedal travel instead of disengaging right at the top and I know it's a fairly new clutch plate in this car so I'm going to have to look at the hydraulics to see if that needs bleeding perhaps hopefully not a big thing but I have been stranded by this car a couple of times when the clutch slave cylinder has actually failed on me I've rebuilt it a couple of times and replaced it a couple of times so it's not a difficult job to do I've, I've done it in the street before um, it let go as I pulled into the motorway services up the M1 that's how I got um, breakdown recovered up to Sheffield from about junction 25 or so and then changed the uh, clutch slave in the street, in the snow, in the cold. It still changes gear okay but uh, I can feel it's a little bit less travel than it should have. Uh, what else do we need to do? Well the paint is very flat all over but that's a big ticket item really. Um, I've got that brand new old stock door sitting in the garage on the V8's engine bay because the worst door on this car is the rear passenger door which is kind of crusty on the inside shuts um, but I'm not going to change that until I do the entire car so it gets painted at once but yeah that's going to be a fairly heavy expense so we'll come back to that later on and I've got that welding behind the headlamp boxes they're a bit crusty on, mainly on the driver's side really I would love desperately to change the, um, the padded dash top. 
a few years ago the windscreen got smashed by someone walking past and punching through the windscreen at night when he was living on the street. Um, and one of the uh, windscreen wipers came through and punctured it. And so now I've got a cracked dash top. I did buy a replacement ages ago, but uh, it was in the garage and uh, something chewed it, so that's no good. So I need to go and find another replacement dash top for that. Um, there's not a great deal else I need to do to this car, really. I want to re-wax oil the entire bottom of the car. It's been redone around the back, around the rear arches after the welding job, but uh, the front of the car and the centre of the car needs doing. Well, on the whole, this car's running really well. The audio and the video won't quite match up at this point because I've been videoing various cameras around the car and I'm now pulling onto the motorway to head back home again. And it's a 50 mile an hour limit and I really hate this section of motorway because it's a 50 limit with average speed cameras and my speedometer is woefully inaccurate. Uh, I'm, it says I'm doing 55, but the little Toyota in front is pulling away. I don't know there's anything I can do about that without replacing the Speedo. It's on the right size tyres, so that's not that problem. But it does show this car is happy to drive on the motorway, even if it is at a low speed. I've got headlights on, so I'm more visible. I haven't really done any work on this car for quite a long time, so um, it seemed like a good opportunity to grab a little bit of video of it, show you that it is still here, and it is still working and I'm still enjoying it, even if it is only very occasionally at this time of year. But yeah, it's been, good to, it's been so good to get this thing out and have a bit of a blast. I hope you've enjoyed my little rattle around the Kent countryside for the afternoon, because I certainly have. I'll go and get some work done on it before too long so I can enthrall you with amazing tales of stuff happening to this car. I'm not sure what it will be. I think it'll probably be radiator hoses and and new antifreeze. I might try some of that Evans coolant stuff, because that's supposed to be really good. Thank you for watching, and please join me again soon for more exciting Rover action. Oh my god, I'm glad I'm not going the other way. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the other carriage over the motorway is currently shut while they are digging a hole in the fast lane. Wow. That would absolutely suck to be stuck in that. Cool. Well, that's a happy note. I'm, I'm going to sign off and say, wow, I, I think I got lucky here by leaving at the time I did. Um, join me again soon. Take care. Goodbye.